Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course to learn how to design isolated, continuous, and pile cap foundations in the STAD Foundation Advanced General Mode. Over the next series of videos, we will show you the complete workflow for assigning rigid foundation types to an overall foundation plan, including isolated footings, combined foundations, and pile cap foundations. We will also show you how to review your overall foundation plan for layout and schedules. In this training, you will design the foundation system for this structure that was analyzed and designed in STAD Pro. Based on the foundation forces, the geotechnical recommendations, and the site condition, the proposed foundation will include spread footings, continuous or combined foundations, and pile cap foundations as shown in this schematic. In addition for our continuous and our spread footings over at the right hand side of our structures, we do have some underground utilities to avoid, so we'll have to play around with the geometry on those particular foundations to consider our site constraints. For the particular foundation plan that we're going to design in this course, we're going to be creating two separate isolated footing jobs. Now an isolated footing job, the footing design parameters will be used to define the local data and initiate the design for each foundation type, such as your concrete and reinforcement parameters, your cover and soil parameters, footing geometry, sliding and overturning factors. Now since we have two different footing types, we're going to have some typical isolated footing types and we have one particular footing where we need to avoid some underground utilities and we're actually going to be designing that as an eccentric footing. And whenever you have any of your design parameters different from footing to footing, you will be required to set up a different job for those different footings, which is what we'll be doing in this training course. For this training, we are going to be using a STAD Foundation Advanced model that's already been created. First, we're going to launch STAD Foundation Advanced by double-clicking on the icon on our desktop. Once the start page opens, we're going to go ahead and open our dataset file that was supplied with this training. Now for this training, all of our global data has been created. So all of our foundation plan information has already been modeled. In addition, all of our loads, including our load cases, load combinations, and support reactions have already been entered into the computer. What we're ready to do is now we're ready to create our isolated footing job. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the footings that I want included in this job, which will be supports 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 10, and 11. I'm going to hold down my control key and select those supports. Now when you hold down your control key, it will allow you to select more than one support at one time. Once you select your supports, go ahead and click on the Create a New Job option over in the job setup group in the main navigator. We're going to enter our nut job name. I'm going to call these typical footings. My job type will be isolated, meaning isolated or spread footings. I'm going to use the US design codes, the English unit system, and I'm going to assign this to my selected supports, which I've already selected over here. And you can see we do have some options for our support assignment. I'm going to use the ACI 318.11 for today's training. The last thing I need to do is I need to select which load cases and load combinations I want included in the design for the selected spread footings. And I'm going to go down here and click on my second icon from the left to include all of my defined load cases and load combinations in the design. The last thing I need to do is I'm going to go ahead and click Create Job. And I'm going to create a new spread footing job and here I'm ready to start taking a look at my design parameters. 
We will now specify all of the design parameters for this isolated footing job, and we'll start at the top and work our way down, starting with our concrete and reinforcement parameters. Here we can enter our unit weight of concrete, our minimum and maximum bar spacing requirements, our strength of materials including concrete and reinforcing steel, and our maximum footing size bar for our top and the bottom plus our pedestal. Now for each of these parameters, we've already set them here, we're going to go ahead and click on the Set as Default option. In this exercise, we're going to be setting all the parameters as the default because in the next section, we will be designing the eccentric footing, which is actually for support number four. Now the majority of the design parameters will be identical to the typical footings that we're designing now. The only thing that will be different is some of our eccentricity requirements. So by setting the default flag to yes, when we define our next isolated footing job, all of these parameters will all be already be filled in for us and we could just focus on the things that are different about that particular foundation. Next, after your concrete and reinforcement, we'll go ahead and set our cover requirements. Here we can enter our soil type, our clear cover requirements, our unit weight of soil and our soil bearing capacity, which will be four kips per square foot per our geotechnical report on this particular site. We can do a depth of soil above footing and the depth of the soil and the footing self weight will automatically be included in all of your calculations. The type of depth is a fixed top which means that the top will be fixed and if the footing needs to get thicker to go down deeper. We can add a surcharge for our loading. We can enter a depth of water table and we can enter some shear strength requirements and the minimum percent of contact area. Again, I'm going to go ahead and set my default to yes. Next, we can go ahead and enter our footing geometry parameters. Now, the first option we have is our design type, and we have several different options here. For this exercise, we're going to go ahead and set that to calculate dimension, which basically means that we're going to allow STAD Foundation Advanced to optimize this footing as far as the length and the width and thickness of the footing. We can also use the option to set dimension and whenever you do that, that might be especially helpful if you want to define a particular size for your footing and have the program tell you whether or not that footing is passing or failing. And we most commonly use that in something like an existing foundation or something again that might have some site constraints that would limit the size of your footing. We can also do a fixed width and a fixed length where one dimension of your footing would be fixed and would be allowed to grow in the other direction yielding most likely a rectangular footing. We're going to go ahead and select calculate dimension and we're going to enter our minimum length and width of 4 feet. We'll do a minimum thickness of 12 inches and our maximum length and width we'll go ahead and set at 15 feet for this exercise. Maximum thickness will be at 48 inches and our plan dimension increment and our thickness increment. What that will do is it will start the footing at your minimum size and then if that doesn't work it will grow it by your thickness or plan dimension increment and in this case we'll go ahead and enter it at 6 inches and it will keep doing that iteration process until it finds a footing size that is acceptable. Next we'll enter our offset in our X and Z directions and for this exercise, we're designing concentrically loaded footing, so we'll leave both of those set at zero inches. Lastly, we're going to set our length to width ratio, and we're going to leave that set to one, which basically means we would prefer a square footing. And again, we're going to set our default as yes. The last parameter we're going to enter is our sliding and overturning factors. And these are basically your factors of safety that you're going to be using against those types of stability checks. We're going to enter a coefficient of friction of 0.5, again as recommended by our geotechnical engineer. And we're going to enter a factor of safety against sliding and overturning, and we're going to leave those set to the default of 1.5. Now before we go ahead and design, it's always good practice to go ahead and save your model to make sure all of your changes are captured. After the design parameters are all entered, we are now ready to design the foundations that are within this foundation design job. Over in the main navigator, we'll again go back to our isolated footing job and click on the design command, and then we'll confirm the analysis and design by clicking yes.
After the design is complete, the calculation sheet will automatically be on your screen. Here we have an isolated footing design summary for each of the foundations in our model, plus detailed calculations for each footing design. We do have a quick links to the summary table in each of the isolated footing designs in this particular job. And we can see here that our first few footings are our largest ones, those are our perimeter columns. We have an 11 foot by 11 foot footing with one foot thickness. And then some of our interior footings are a little bit smaller. If we scroll down a little bit more, we also have a summary table for the required reinforcement. This information is also provided in the output pane that is below our calculation sheet. Now for each footing, we can go ahead and select the isolated footing design here. Then we have some quick links to each of their design checks. And we'll notice that some design checks will be available for our final footing design results. We can get some information about the pressure at the four corners. We'll get our stability and in checking information, including our pedestal heights. And we are going to get some shear calculations for punching shear and one-way shear in each direction. We will also have some flexural calculations in each direction in pedestal design. Now, just as a reminder, all of our service load combinations will be used to determine what your overall footing size should be based on your bearing requirements and also will be used for all of your stability checks. Again, all of your ultimate load combinations will be used for any shear or flexural calculations for either the footing or your pedestal design. In addition to having all this information in our report, we can also get some detailed drawings on each footing within this job. Here up in my tabbed view window, I'm now going to select my detail and schedule drawing. And here I can see that I have an option for schedule drawing. And this includes so far just the footings that are in this particular job. And if I click on their detail drawing, I can see a detail of each footing, including some plan dimensions, I have an elevation, and I have some more details about the footing reinforcement and also the pier reinforcement. I have this information for each of the footings in this particular job. I can customize any of the CAD information on this drawing by changing my font sizes, my text colors, my line thicknesses, and so forth. I do have an option to also save the drawing as a CAD file, and this might be a great way for you to use STAD Foundation Advanced to assist you in creating your final construction documents. Now after the design is complete, we're also going to go ahead and click the Save icon to capture all of these results. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.